Let's get more now on the story about those Greenpeace activists being held at gunpoint by Russia's Coast Guard in Arctic waters. Their ship was seized two days after they attempted to board an offshore drilling platform owned by Gazprom. So did they have a right to be there? And is it ever justified for protesters to engage in illegal activity? Well, joining me now is the head of Greenpeace's Arctic campaign, Ben Aliff, and Raheem Kassam, who's founder of the blog forum Trending Central. Welcome to both of you. Uh, ben Aliff, first of all, why are these activists there. They're there because we think that drilling in the Arctic is possibly one of the most reckless things imaginable. Gazprom are in no way capable of dealing with an accident that we sort of we've seen in places like the Gulf of Mexico recently. It would be a disaster for one of the most fragile, little understood and unique environments on the planet. They simply shouldn't be there. And what's the latest on the activists? Well, unfortunately, we haven't heard anything for approaching 24 hours. We know that they were boarded by armed uh, security guards, but late last night was the last conversation that we had from them. We believe that the ship is going to Mamansk but no official news from the Russian government at all. OK, Rahim, Greenpeace there arguing that the drilling is reckless. Should they be allowed to just carry on peacefully carrying out their protests by the Russians? I think it depends, um, you know, how we, how we term peacefully. Of course, uh, these are, are Russian waters. There are all sorts of um, different uh, legal frameworks surrounding them. Um, Greenpeace and other um, environmental activist groups do have uh, a history of impinging on uh, sovereign territories or on private property. Um, and one would argue that, of course, course, it is up to the organizations who are in charge of those areas to look after them, look after workers who are working in those areas and make sure that lives aren't in danger there. Now, on this incident, we don't actually know um, yet what, Russian, what the Russian authorities are saying caused uh, what they say was, was endangerment. Um, but we do have to listen to both sides of the story, I'm afraid. Well, yes, uh, the Russian Foreign Ministry, as far as I understand, have accused the activists of being aggressive and provocative, um, they have engaging in prov aggressive mm. and provocative behaviour uh, that risks lives and could lead to environmental catastrophe, they say. And, and what about the point that Rahim is, is raising there, the fact that there are people working on that oil rig, perfectly legally, just going about doing their job? I mean, could they be in danger themselves? Well, I think it's a bit rich for the Russian authorities to be accusing Greenpeace of of, of risking the environment when Russia is responsible for more oil spills than anywhere else on the planet. Um, Greenpeace, uh, the, I've been in the Arctic myself, I've climbed an oil rig in the Arctic myself. The number one thing that we talk about, I can guarantee you when we're preparing these things, is safety. That is our absolute watchword. And to say that we're somehow reckless or threatening people is incredible. I mean, I'd like you to give me an example of when Greenpeace has been violent or threatening to, 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 to anyone involved in any of our actions. Well, what about in, in the, the South Seas? Uh, certain Japanese whaling sh ships have been ambushed, haven't they? Some people would say that that puts those people uh, lives at risk if there have been collisions? No, uh, again, Greenpeace haven't. We, we, our central tenant is non-violence. Gre Greenpeace has not been involved in any violent conflict whatsoever. We've been around for 40 42 years. The only person that has been killed in any of our actions was my colleague Fernando Pereira, who was killed on the Rainbow Warrior when it was bombed by the French Secret Service. We, that is the, the idea that we would go out and somehow uh, try to uh, violently interrupt. But, but a the platform. fact that the positioning of your boats could cause harm to some people, do you accept that that could be the case? No, again, Greenpeace has uh, worked very, very hard. We have experts who are, you know, who've worked on ships for a long, long time. The, the watchword for what we do is safety. And I should just stress that the reason that we're doing this isn't because we fancy going out and, you know, getting in the way of ships. We're doing this because there is a very, very clear risk to the Arctic environment that we believe needs public scrutiny and needs to be stopped. OK, R Raheem, a very clear cause that they believe in. They feel the only way that they can be listened to is by these means and they always make safety the number one priority. Well, as Ben said, Greenpeace is, is a very old organisation now. It, it has a huge public platform. It's certainly not the only way um, that they can get people to listen to them. But we have to draw it back to whether or not um, the term violence is relevant here. The term violence is not relevant, but if you do insist on using it, then one would argue that the infringement on certain territories and certain waters is a measure of violence. Now, Greenpeace has any number of ships. How many do you have now? Three or, we do or, have three. or, or two at the moment. Um, and if you're going to act like you have a navy and you're going to act militarily infringing on sovereign territories, then you're going to be met militarily. And it's no use saying that, oh, we didn't expect this of Russia or we put safety first. We know what the Russian government is capable of. You and I would never agree with anything that the Russian government has done to squash protests over the last, so five years with the pussy riot protests and, and all these kind of things. Okay. We know it's going to happen. So why don't you factor that in when you go there? Of course we factor this stuff in. Of course we do. We expect so how come that you there can't would reach be... your, your guys at the moment? 
Well, but, I mean, there are contingency plans. There are contingency plans, of course. But when you're dealing with the Russian authorities, and we, we do have you know, a response plan for dealing with this. But when you have a ship which is taken hundreds of miles away from the coast without any uh, you know, recourse to telling uh, our people in Russia, our legal team, what is going on, it is very, very difficult to do that. However, it doesn't, uh, I think, detract from the, the, the simple argument that that, that that there is a very clear reason why we're in the Arctic, and that is because these companies are not reckless. We have tried speaking with the likes of Shell and Gazprom. We have done legal challenges. We've been okay. involved in the official processes. Nothing seems to work. So that there, there are times, I'm afraid, where peaceful, direct action is essential. A quick word on that, Raheem. How else can they get attention to a cause they believe in deeply? Well, I mean, I, I know various people who have been involved with Greenpeace in the past. There are relevant, high-profile people who have spoken out about this. These tactics uh, are not just to raise awareness on the issues, although I'll grant you that they are. We know as well that these tactics are used for fundraising purposes for Greenpeace. It relies on public donations or, or philanthropy for its work and getting media headlines, having us talking here about it on a mainstream news channel is fantastic for your fundraising, I'm sorry, is I it think, not? I think this completely demeans the actions that these 30 people have taken. 30 people have been locked up. They've put their liberty on the line because they care passionately about the Arctic and the environment. They would have done this, whatever the media attention. On Wednesday, when we, did, when, we, when we did, this, when we did this, time. when we did the initial action on Wednesday, there was absolutely no media attention. They still did it anyway because they believe passionately in trying to protect the Arctic. Uh, uh, Arctic, and that is a fundamental truth, I'm afraid. Well, I, I mean, I think the evidence speaks for itself. You it rely does indeed. On, you you're, rely, you're quite right. I, I know I am. Uh, you rely on these things for media attention. Nobody's blaming you for that. But when you're putting lives on the line, like you just said, these people have put their liberty on the line for this. And I didn't you, say they put their lives on the line. I said they put liberty, liberty on the line, on the line. As, as I said. Um, you okay. have got 30 people now who you cannot get in touch with. These people, you cannot reach your ship. That is a massive failing on your part. OK, we, we need to leave it there. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank Bade Alif and Rahim Kassam, we appreciate you debating this. You you can carry on after, <laughs> after we've gone off air. Thanks very much indeed. And just to let you know that as we understand it, uh, that ship is probably heading towards uh, the port of Mamance, but we will keep you up to date, of course, with its uh, progress. Thank you.